If he's cut and the situation presents itself, should the Ravens sign Odell Beckham Jr.? Listen, a couple more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on this thing Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be a part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons shout out to the lovely patrons you can send it directly on patreon if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids we got some questions that have been on a lot of people's minds I seen it in the comment section I seen it on Twitter and let's just go ahead and get straight into it. So the first question came from my boy Jerome. Shout out to you for being a patron. He said, if the Browns don't pay Odell Beckham Jr. to sit at home for the rest of the season and actually go through with his release, I doubt it. What are the chances our Ravens pick him up? He is due 8 mil and there is currently 11 mil in space. Where? <laughs> Not for no Ravens. Ravens ain't got no 11 mil space. You better take 10 mil off of that. They got about one point some. So Ray, Raven certainly ain't got no. <laughs> he said, also, how would you see him fitting in the offense if he actually came to be more? I'm sure he'd love to play with a baller like Lamar and get his chance to burn Cleveland on the field. Oh, yes, you know he would. So first, let's talk about the financials. All right. So just to make it clear for everybody, normally a veteran who's played more than four years, if they have four, four years or more of NFL service, then once they're released, they are a free agent automatically, but that's before the trade deadline. After the trade deadline, whether you've been playing 20 years, if you were released, you got to clear waivers, my friend. You ain't no unrestricted free agent just like that. You got to clear waivers. We all remember the Terrell Suggs story. Remember when he went to the Cardinals and then the Cardinals cut him and so many Ravens fans was like, oh, give me, give me, give me, give me back. And then he ended up getting claimed by the Chiefs. So, and Ravens, they ain't even putting a claim for him. But he got claimed by the Chiefs because he had to pass through the waiver wire. Then he got his participation award, Super Bowl trophy. So anyway, back to Odell Beckham Jr. So if he's released right now, and I, well, he could be released by the time y'all see this video, because this is being recorded on Thursday, November 4th at 4.58 p.m. If he is released, then he will have to pass through waivers. So what the waiver wire is, the teams with the worst record, they have first dibs. The teams with the best record, they have worst dibs. So Ravens would be among the teams with some of the worst dibs for Odell Beckham Jr. Now, here's where Ravens actually have a realistic shot to get him. It wouldn't be through the waiver wire because anybody who claims Odell Beckham Jr., they would have to pay the remainder of his salary. You got to pay him his money. He's due his money. If he passed through waivers and you make that claim, all right, you take on the player and the contract. This is the, the, the small little percent right there where the Ravens actually have a shot. If all the teams in the waiver wire, they look at Odell Beckham Jr. They're like, hmm, nice player, but mm, that money, uh, we can't take that on. So if 31 teams, well, 30 teams, because you know the Giants, they, <laughs> nope. But so if, if 30 teams, if they look at that contract and they're like, nope, no thanks, no can do, we don't want it, we can't deal with it, we can't afford it, we ain't gonna bother with it. If they are all like that, then he would clear waivers and then he would become a free agent. So Browns, whatever money Browns owed him, you gotta pay him that bread. You would have to pay him that bread. So then, while he's a free agent, then he, he would have the, uh, the, the opportunity to choose where he went. He would get to choose what team he went to. So I, I, if he got that opportunity, I know he would be so happy. He'd be so happy. Like, you get to choose what team you go to at this stage in your career, at this point of the season. But now, see, this is where the Ravens, that, this is where they would have their best shot if, if all of that stuff happened. And then he was like, hmm, what team is a team that I could go to? They got to have a good quarterback, though, first. They, they, they got to be a successful team that actually got a realistic shot at winning this year. So you'd be thinking... Like, okay, I just left the Browns. Um, yeah, so, so, okay, yeah, I could go here. Um, well, there's a, okay. But you know what? These Browns, all these, these, a lot of these Browns fans, they've been putting it on me, saying I'm done. 
even though I done dropped a little handful of catches now. But um, they, they put it on me, and they saying I ain't got it no more. Some say I'm a locker room, uh, I'm, I'm a locker room cancer. Some, some say I'm just, uh, I'm a terrible person. Some say I'm a diva. Some say this, that, and the third. I want to show these boys. So how can I go to a successful team with an opportunity to stick it to the Browns? All right, how them Bengals looking? Bengals looking good. They looking good. They, uh, oh, they just got beat by the Jets. Hold up now. I, oh, no, nah, I, I can't mess with that. They looking good now, but they, they, uh, they, they got a little ways to go. I don't really trust them yet. Steelers, oh, they, nice defense. Oh, oh, ooh, yikes. Ben Roethlisberger, if Baker couldn't give me the ball, then Big Ben definitely can't give me the ball. Then they'll think, whoa, whoa, the Ravens, oh. Oh, the Ravens, oh. They got, they got offensive, oh, wow. They got offense this year. And these dudes are passing the ball this year. Oh, man, that's right up my alley. And then sometimes the receivers, they be dropping the ball too. Oh, yeah, that's me. Oh, okay, well, I would fit right in there. But wait, they ain't got no money. But you know what? Since I'm getting paid from the Browns, they got to pay me the rest of my salary. I could take a little, little cheap deal. It ain't got to be much. Just give me a shot, coach. Oh, Hardball, he, well, he'll let me be myself? Okay. Oh, Lamar and Hollywood and them? They, oh, they be dancing like that? Oh, man, they, oh, they have fun. Oh, oh, you, ooh, you know what? Now that I think about it. How about, the, you know what? Lamar, hit my line, man. Hit my line. Let, let, let me tweet Lamar to hit my line so the world can see. So let me, cause, cause, all right, just tweeted it. That would be the scenario where Odell Beckham Jr. could actually become a Raven. It is highly unlikely that it makes it to that opportunity, but everything depends on, obviously, if he's released, and then, too, if, um, if he clears waivers, too. That's important. So, uh, he also asks, how would he fit in this offense? Um, I, uh, I think it would be the, sort of the same as it, as it was in Cleveland. He, uh, well, he'd probably get more looks, but, man, it, because we got Sammy, we got Hollywood, we got Bateman, uh, and Sammy just got back, and, and wow, we got Duvernay. Prochet, he been getting in every now and then, not too often, though. Um, he would give us another playmaking wide receiver. And, I mean, you, you, can, really have, you can really never have enough of those. Um, but the, 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 the passes, he would, he would get some chances now. But just the fit. Hmm. Uh, It will take a lot of physicality, man. And he is, um, even though he's dealing with an injury, I think he got like a shoulder injury or something right now. Um, he would like really have to, to, to bring it. Because as a receiver for the Ravens, yeah, your job is to catch the ball. Your job is also to block too. Um, and enough times the way that the offensive line is, you, you got to like really give it some heart, man. You got to give it some heart because... If a play breaks down, or offensive line breaks down, which we have become accustomed to, but if the offensive line breaks down, you got to look back for the ball. And you can't just stop on your route. You got you to gotta come up with something new, come back to the ball, and be willing to fight for that ball and be willing to help your quarterback, which is obviously Lamar Jackson. Um, so vibe-wise, with the vibe, I think Odell Beckham Jr. could fit in. I, I, I do. Um, but he, if he would be looking to get like 10 targets and I know Hollywood got like 14 15 targets the other day that's an anomaly though but if Odell's looking to get that on a weekly basis this ain't the team for you my friend it's not the team for you um I know my guy Kevin Redline he brought out a really good point um it'd be even before the season started way before the season started and it makes sense he said the Ravens especially when it comes to receiver he said they they were never really looking for the guy at wide receiver he said they were looking for uh the guys and what he meant by that and he broke it down too and it was a really good explanation but what he meant by that is that with the ravens uh it's it's a committee it's a committee so yeah one person might go off one game next game that person might be quiet but it's a it's a group of guys where they can all 
end up having this this group reliability to where they can be counted on. And hey, if, if one coming up short, then the other one could pick them up. If the other one coming up short, then the other one could pick them up. And it's not just that guy. So it's like, all right, that's the guy that you got to stop. No, it's, it's, it's a group, collective effort. And my boy Kevin, let, let me know if I explained it wrong because I don't want to mess up your words. But anyway, uh, so Odell Beckham, I, I don't think it would really be the best fit. I, I don't. Because um, if, if the issues is obviously targets, if the issue is um, cause he ain't, it ain't like he, gonna come, he would come to the Ravens and all of a sudden his targets would go way up. No, no, he would get his. But with the Ravens, it's one of those things where you got to make the most of it, man. You got to make the most of it. Now, when you think about it, too, now, it's, it's already going to be nice to get Sammy back with Bateman and Hollywood and Andrew. Ooh. But then when you think about it, think about if, if they were to get an Odell Beckham Jr. too. Ooh. That would be nice. It would be. It would be nice. Um, it would be like just, just riches. Riches for Lamar. And this is something that I felt they, they should have done years ago, especially with him being on his rookie deal. You see Kyler Murray, they gave him riches. They gave him plenty of raw wide receivers. Plenty. Plenty. See Josh Allen. See how when they got him, that guy in wide receiver, see how things change? You see that? Even Ryan Tannehill, not, definitely not on his rookie deal. Far from his rookie deal. They still taking care of that guy. They still are. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Even Tua, Tua, boy, they, they gave Tua some stuff too now. Even though Tua, he, he's done with he's done with the Dolphins. Like, uh, But I, I want Ravens to take advantage of this done Tua in a week from now. But, ooh, it's a, it's a, ooh, it's a week. It's a week from today. Wow. Ooh, almost there. Um, but anyway, so I, I wouldn't mind, but I just, I don't see it happening at all. <laughs> See, I knew, I knew this question was on more people's minds than my boy Jerome. Next question came from my boy Jarvo. He said, a few quick questions for you. If OBJ gets released from Cleveland, should we pursue him? Well, we already answered that in the previous one. And he said, yes, I know we have an above average receiving core, but adding a player like OBJ would be great for, for our offense as well. So, yeah, we done took care of that one. Now, his next question was, uh, it's not Ravens related, uh, but what are your thoughts on the Henry Rugg situation? With that, um, bad situation. All around, you feel for the victims. You feel for Rug. It's just it's bad because he made such a terrible decision, terrible decision. And when we're young, oh, we and even when we get older, we still make terrible decisions sometimes. But this is this is one that it could have been avoided. And I mean, a lot of times when you're not involved in it, and especially if you've never been through it. It's easy to be on the outside looking in and be like, oh, man, that guy's the worst guy ever. And it's bad. What he did, what he did was terrible, terrible. And, and the worst part for me is with the family because you got to pay for somebody else's mistake. You, lost your, you lose your family member because you got to pay for somebody else's mistake. And you couldn't do anything about it. That's the, wor that's the worst part. The worst part is they cannot do anything about the situation. No matter how much money he gives them, no matter how much what settlements, no matter what happens, they can't do anything about it. Nothing. And that's the part that um that's the saddest part for me, man. Like, that's that is the saddest part, man. Because, man, some somebody's mistake, they like somebody end up losing their life because of something like that, man. It's like, come on, man. That's just, it's, it's tough, man. It's, 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 so, it's so sad to think about because, ah, and, and I don't know, like, for the, the rookie symposiums and all that, I'm not sure if they still do that. I don't know if they did it last year because of the whole COVID thing. Um, so maybe they didn't have it. But even still, like, these guys as rookies, they, they're still young men. They, they're young men that don't grow up the same as 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 a regular man and not that it's an excuse at all because it's not but these guys like with the uh with the rookies I, I just i wonder if they had the talking to like hey be careful hey don't go out or even if you do go out hey here's our service call us if nfl got their own service or they could just call an uber or lyft or whatever a taxi 
do that. But, and it's easier said than done. Easier said than done, especially, like, you never know how some of these guys feel. I don't know if Henry Ruggs feel like this. I can't say. But you never know. Somebody could be like, man, I done drunk plenty of times before. I'm good with my liquor. I can hold my liquor. I'm straight with my liquor. I'm good. Don't worry about me. And then boom. So I just, I, I just feel for just, it's it just sad, man. Yeah, that, that's it. It's just a sad, sad situation, man. Next question. Literally, I literally just got this email at 5, it's 5.12 p.m. Thursday, November 4th. And I got this email at 5.11 from G-Star. He said, do you think the Ravens should or would go after Odell if he gets his inevitable release? Just think of him in purple and black against his old team two times this year. And yeah, I think that's all that it would be. I think it would, if he did, if by some chance it did happen, I think he would only play them Browns two times. And then I don't think he would get re-signed by the Ravens. I just, I don't see it. Because uh, cause if, if he were to get re-signed by the Ravens, he, ooh, boy, you talk about team friendly. You, you talk, <laughs> and plus Lamar getting ready to get paid. You talk about team, team friendly. He would have to take a cheaper than team friendly deal. And he said, I know we said that the Ravens can free up money if need be, but do you think they would for a player like Odell Beckham Jr.? No, I don't, I don't think they would. I, I don't. Um, again, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't be mad at it at all. Especially, <laughs> oh, man, that would be just so. You just smile at all these Browns fans and be like, ah, how we got them. Um, and we ain't had to give up nothing for them. That would be something right there. But I just, I, I don't see it happening. Uh, I know a lot of Browns fans would be like, oh, man, that guy, he sucks. He's terrible. He's this, he's that. Man, uh, and then they start going at Lamar. Oh, Lamar, he's not going to be able to get him the ball. Baker couldn't, Lamar can't do it. But it, it would just be fun to see the reaction and just the back and forth. And But I, I don't think we'll ever get to see it. All right, next question came from my boy Lionel. Now, let's see if he is on the same wavelength as everybody else was so far. Here we go. I haven't read it yet. He said, hey, man. <laughs> He said, hey, man, hope everything is all good with the family. Do you see the Ravens potentially signing another wide receiver with the impending release of OBJ? So we talked about that. And d Jack being released from the Rams. Do you think we should go after one of them? All right, so Deshaun Jackson, he is officially a free agent. Nobody claimed him on waivers. Now he's officially an undrafted free agent. I mean, not undrafted, unrestricted free agent. He can go anywhere he wants to. He can go to any team he wants to or any team that wants him. It takes two to tangle. But, um, again, I wouldn't mind. I, I would not mind. Cause, and, and it would be sort of a different route. It would sort of still kind of be the, the cheapy route at wide receiver. But it is what it is at this point of the season. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind. Um, but then you think about our young guys. Think about a Devin Duvernay. Especially because he's the one that's been getting the most opportunity out of all of our young guys. My, mine is Bateman and Hollywood because they're they young too. But you think about it, Devin Duvernay. What would this do to him? What would this do for his development? What would this do for his just his future? Um, now, then you could think on the opposite end of that. Like, hey, well, Deshaun Jackson, proven player, proven wide receiver in the league, proven guy. He could make some stuff happen for these Ravens. And he could. He could. Um, and it just it just all depends on what side of the fence you are. Would you rather, hey, those those pet catches that will go to Deshaun Jackson, they can go to Devin Duvernay right now. He's already here. He's younger. He's healthy. He ain't had no injury issues. He got some speed. Ravens just got to use him the right way. And I think that's still that's still a thing. Um, so that that's that. Or you could be like Deshaun Jackson. Hey, this guy would just come come to help out. And we know the cornerbacks would actually respect him a little more. They may back up off of him a little more because of that speed. Because he can still move now. So, so again, all, all depends what side of the fence you on. But so I wouldn't mind. Um, but then, like you, your receiver room is already a little bit crowded now. So then somebody would have to go. And the last question on this episode, that question from Sub, it's not about Odell Beckham Jr. And it came from Addy from Manhattan. Shout out to New York. I went to New York uh, about five years ago. It was during the cold, and I, I just, I just didn't like it at all. But maybe I just, maybe we need to do a redo trip. You do a redo trip, go back there again, 
just run it back and we'll see but anyway yeah it ain't nothing against you so anyway he said i hope all is well with you and the family and i appreciate everything you do for the ravens community as a student your videos provide a great stress relief during study sessions and i'm sure many other members of the flock can attest so i appreciate that thank you i don't know because if i don't know i feel like with the videos if you studying i hope i ain't make you fail your classes man and if you did my apologies in advance my apologies for the past i hope you ain't fail I said, so thank you for much. Thank you so much for that. We greatly appreciate it. My question is, for you is regarding Chris Board, a.k.a. number 49, a.k.a. Flight 49. Is that what he really called? If so, I ain't know that. Anyway, he said, while he has always been a strong special teams presence, I feel like during the later, the latter half of the 2020 season and during the first half of the 2020, I cannot talk right now during this email. So I feel like during the latter half of the 2020 season and during the first half of the 2021 season, he has proven himself to be more than capable uh, more than a capable rotational linebacker on defense. While he does not have the athletic profile of a Patrick Queen or the veteran instincts of a Josh Bynes, I feel that he provides a steady, reliable presence whenever he is on the field. I agree. Uh, as such, I'm hoping to see him out there more on defense for the remainder of the season. I was wondering if you felt the same way. Everything depends on Patrick Queen. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't feel like they're going to be like, you know what, Patrick Queen, all right. We reduce your snaps. You're playing better. Uh, all right, Chris Boyd, you over here. I, I don't feel like they're going to do that. And, and with Josh Bynes being that the Mike guy, um, he's he's responsible for a little bit more than Patrick Queen, obviously, because he's sort of that, that leader of the defense. Um, so, no, nah, I, I, don't, I don't really see Chris Boyd getting much opportunity. Only way I would see that is would be if, Ravens were in a blowout game and they were way up on their opponents. Or if they were getting whooped pretty bad and they were way down on their opponents. Um, or, unfortunately, if there was an injury. I, I just I just don't see it, man. I just really don't see it. Maybe, like, every now and then, say, Josh Bynes or something, get tired. Patrick Queen getting a little tired. Even though Patrick Queen snaps, they way lower, so he probably ain't going to be getting tired. But something like that but i just i really don't see him getting a significant role increase at this point of the season or moving forward he said with queen likely transitioning the weak side linebacker and lj fort and possibly malik harrison out do you oh oh I, I forgot about that okay well that uh I, I completely forgot about the whole malik harrison situation which is another unfortunate situation wrong place wrong time um and i know my guy uh who's who's friends with him uh he said that he ain't gonna be in that area no more so he said Malik he's gonna he gonna be staying away from there for a little minute so that's a good thing shout out to you Trey anyway uh he said with Queen likely transitioning to weak side linebacker and LJ Ford and possibly Malik Harrison out do you believe flight 49 is cleared for boarding oh, oh I like that oh I like how you cleared for board Chris board cleared for boarding I love that uh with the inconsistency of our secondary this season one could argue that he has been the best, oh, the best CB on the Ravens. Man, you, my boy with the wordplay. He's been the best CB on the Ravens this season. Get cornerback, CB, Chris Boyd. Man, I love this email, man. Just for these, the, the wordplay alone. He said, I hope this question reaches you well, and I hope that you and the family uh, have a great end of the year. Uh, and thanks for everything you do, and I look forward to continuing to enjoy your videos. Shout out to you, Addy. That that was great. That that was like so well put together. And um, wow. I loved it. I, I loved it. Loved that email from start to finish. Thank you for the, the creativity on that. Thank you for just again the wordplay. And thank you for reminding me about Malik Harrison, because that's something that I forgot about. So yes, I, I do with Malik Harrison being out, yes, I do envision now Chris Boyd getting more playing time. Cause that is something that completely slipped my mind. Completely. So I appreciate it.